just got done watching Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves and what a great movie this was to end the month of March. Now, at the time of recording this, I actually did get to see it very early, about two to three weeks early, and what a big surprise this was because, you know, I was excited for this. This was, again, one of my most anticipated films for this month, but... With fantasy films like this, sometimes they can turn out great, sometimes they can turn out like crap. And watching the trailers for this, it looked fun. But nothing was really, like, exciting me. What was truly exciting me was the stuff that we got to see at San Diego Comic-Con. Now, I got to attend the panel there, the clips were great, but the directors themselves made a movie called Game Night back in 2018, one of my favorite films of that year, and it was one of the biggest surprises of that year because what Game Night gave me was my comfort film of that year. The second released on Blu-ray, I was streaming, I was watching that thing all year long, always in the background right before going to bed i just could not get enough of that movie and coming out of this movie it was the exact same way i cannot wait to watch this movie again i cannot wait for it to come on streaming i cannot wait for it to come on blu-ray so that way i can consistently have it in the background to enjoy be entertained and laugh my butt off this is the type of high fantasy octane adventure that you absolutely want dungeons and dragon fans are absolutely going to have a blast with this movie and be able to smile and laugh and truly enjoy themselves with this film but what they're also going to get if you've never played dungeons and dragons you're going to get a love letter to fantasy films and fantasy and for those nerds and geeks who would be out on the playground being bullied by people for playing knights and sorcery and wizardry because that was me when I was a kid, I was out there on the playground teaching my friends about Diablo 2, which if you know what Diablo 2 is, that, that is one of the best RPGs out there. But I was teaching them what it was, and we were running around the playground playing as the different classes since I was the only one allowed to play that game as a kid, and it just brought me back to my childhood on that and you can't take that away and I love what they were able to give me with this but I definitely want to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section were you guys excited for this movie were you not have you seen the film let me know down below as well as make sure to hit that like subscribe button for more movie related content on a daily basis I love talking movies and if you do the same then this is certainly the channel for you that said let's dive into my pros and starting with the basis the cast is fantastic here each and every one of them gets really much a major or standout moment that just had me grinning from cheek to cheek and one of the biggest things that I do have to address here is again this film does jump around quite a bit which for a lot of fantasy things or a lot of sci-fi whatever you want to say that could be a detriment this film actually uses it to its advantage because the perfect way to explain this film is a group of friends playing Dungeons and Dragons, role-playing themselves into this high fantasy world where weird stuff can happen, and truly enough, that weird stuff could come from a potato being used as a weapon, or a new location, or a new character that joins the adventure along the way. And it consistently does feel like you are playing a game. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but that feeling is kind of the core structure of this. It's never going to really settle down and spend too much time on one central location or one central idea because it has a pacing to it that consistently tries to tell you keep up along the way and they even have fun with making fun of that and I love it because I know in the Dungeons and Dragons community there's something called a dungeon master and in a way, like, the entire story is being told by a dungeon master. I'm not saying that the film is narrated by any sense, because it's not, but the pacing of it does really much feel like that, and the directors here kind of feel like the dungeon master while we're actually inside this world playing the game with the character. And going back to the crew we have here, I mean, Chris Pine is just delightful in here. There's an argument to be made that he might be even the best Chris in Hollywood after this movie. I love him so much in here. He's very endearing, he's very smartass and wisecracking, and he's exactly what you expect him to be. And every single moment with him in this film just carries the movie with such a delight. I need more of him in this world. One of the other actors that a lot of people I know are looking forward to is Reggae Jean Page, which I might just be mispronouncing that, I apologize. He's from Bridgerton, I've never seen Bridgerton, and... Let me say this right now. I'm saying him early on. If you are coming for this movie just for him, I will give you a warning. He's probably only in the movie for about 15, 20 minutes. 
if that. And it's more of a glorified cameo. I wish they actually would have kept him as a surprise for the film because there is one cameo in here that I had to take a damn double take on. I was like, is that who I think it is? Which is a great moment. But everything with Paige in this film is some of the biggest standouts of the entire film. The way he plays this character, the way they wrote this character, he plays as a paladin is just amazing. And it adds, again, more needed material for the entire film. And Paige just makes the entire thing work. If you're a fan of him, you are going to absolutely love his entire sequence. Coming through the rest of the cast real fast, Justice Smith is just great. This is actually probably one of my favorite roles of his. I really liked what he's done in Hollywood so far, but finally, I think he gets kind of the role that really fits for him personality-wise. Thea Lillis is also a big standout in here playing as a druid. I loved it. Seeing her transform into all these different creatures was a blast. Hugh Grant, He's playing Hugh Grant in a fantasy world, and you just come to love it. Honestly, for me, out of the entire crew, the person that I've not talked about yet is Michelle Rodriguez because she stole the entire damn film. This is the best I've seen Michelle Rodriguez since the early Fast and Furious movies, or even like the last James Cameron Avatar film, the very first one. And I say that because I feel like no one really uses Michelle Rodriguez great in movies. She's fun in the Fast and Furious movies, and I hope that in the next one she does get a little bit more material to do, but they use her in this film in such a badass but hilarious way because she plays each and every moment into such a top tier way that you would expect for her to play in but the role feels like it was truly written for her and again i loved all the action sequences with her and i love the humorous moments with her as well and speaking of those action sequences if we want to double down back to that each and every one of them is filmed in a very fluid manner. If you remember that one sequence in Game Night where they're running around the entire house, that is how a lot of the action feels in here. It's not choppy, it's not edited in a weird style or manner. It feels where you can actually see every single thing going on. And Paige has one of the biggest highlights of action sequences in the entire film. Michelle Rodriguez, every time she's in an action fight, it is great. And each act builds on the last when it comes down to the action set pieces in here you've seen the trailers you've seen that giant dragon that's a great set piece but when it comes down to like one of the final fights in here it was great to see so many different abilities being thrown all at once and it put again a smile on my face to see how they're using this fantasy world and that is the directors john francis daly and jonathan goldstein and the way again that they use this world this fantasy world they build upon it. They show so many different locations and areas, and that was all great. And so many different creatures as well, which again, I'm sure fans of this lore are going to be oozing with excitement. But what I was oozing from was being taken into this brand new world, not really knowing anything about it, but wanting to know more about it now. And now I want to go and start like Dungeons and Dragons with friends or join some groups with my friends who do play it. But what I want to do now with it is just seek it in. And it was cool being mystified and taken to this brand new fantasy world that I do not know much more about. Because I, if you name anything else fantasy, I know it. But this is something new to me. And also getting to see a bunch of the different abilities in here and the different spells and magic and even items that they find along the way. And the cool unique aspects of those was just fantastic to see. I also love that they always kept along with the humor and knitted it perfectly in here. And in a way, this is kind of feels like a modern day Monty Python in the Holy Grail, which is one of my favorite comedies of all time. And while Dungeons and Dragons is not completely all out comedy, there is a lot of hilarious moments that play perfectly to the T. And it does feel like you're in a room with your friends around a table playing Dungeons and Dragons. Like from the things that I've watched people live stream on it, it feels exactly that, where one character is completely just going off on a rant, telling a story, and telling that storytelling device in the way that it needs to be. And the humor that's knitted throughout there always fits perfectly within the tone of the entire film. That was hands down my favorite aspect of the entire film, was just how much fun you can have with it, how much laughs you get with it, and how many different running jokes they have throughout here that just continue to up the ante. One of the scenes they showed us at Comic-Con, they did release as a clip, and it's about them going to the, like this burial ground for all these undead warriors, and pretty much resurrecting them and only getting to ask them five questions. And the insanity that ensues there just feels perfect. Movie in a way 
the more I think about it, just feels perfect into its light. Is it a perfect movie? No, by no means. There's there's some nitpicks I can definitely get into, and like speaking on those, I can see some people being annoyed with the way that they kind of jump around from location to location and really don't focus on too much of one character or one idea. And honestly, you don't really care about any of the characters. You just have fun with them. You just want to see along for the journey and. I felt like I was actually along for the journey, and I feel like that's what the directors were going for. I don't think they were going for a more dramatic route, which I will say, going into this movie, what I actually expected was that by the end of the film, this is not a spoiler because it does not happen, because I'm actually trying to help you understand the, how this film works, is I was expecting it to be a group of friends playing Dungeons & Dragons at the very end, and maybe it being about some very griefing way for them to move past this. And maybe that idea is in the back of my head because if you've ever played Borderlands 2, there is a DLC in there. For people who don't know what DLC is, it's an add-on with a character who is trying to get over a character's death in the game. And her way of doing it is them playing their own version of Dungeons & Dragons. I kind of expected something like that to be in here, specifically because of certain plot lines that they kind of layer out throughout this film. But it's not that way. And upon thinking about it, that's not what they were shooting out for this film. Drastically, the tone would have shifted in a completely different manner. And could it have worked? Maybe. Definitely wasn't what the directors and writers were in mind with this film. What a fun, hilarious love letter to fantasy film and really much just those nerds and geeks who wanted to live in this time period. And that's exactly what I got here. I had so much fun with it. And just to kind of close out my nitpicks and my cons before we wrap up this review is some people might find the movie to be long. Not personally for me. I, the more and more I think about this film, the more and more I love it. Dungeons and Dragons brought back memories of my childhood when I would run around the playground and pretend I was a knight with all my friends. It's a laugh out loud love letter to all geeks and nerds out there and the entire cast is great, but I truly think Rodriguez steals the entire show. Some people will find it to be a little bit too long. Some people might even hate how it jumps around so much, but I think that's the whole point. It's supposed to be like you're playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons with your friends, but you are actually in the meat of it all with the fun characters, the fun creatures, and all the sorts of galore that you find inside this world. I could have lived here for hours. I absolutely hope this spawns a new franchise within the world of movies because I could go along with this new cast and crew as much as possible. I had such a blast with this film and I think a lot of you guys will as well. And with that said, I'm going to give Dungeons and Dragons honor among thieves and a minus you so much again guys for watching this i cannot wait to hear your guys thoughts on this movie and what you guys thought about it make sure to leave your thoughts down below hit that like and subscribe button and of course until next time stay class